Welcome to this episode of Open SCAD by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to share with you guys uh, something I whipped up and just show you how kind of unique Open SCAD is versus what you can do with it. So I do a lot with this closet made. Um, there's, there's a number of vendors, uh, closet made. John Sir Sterling, I believe it is, or Sterling, Sterling, something like that. Anyways, it makes this dual track shelf, and this stuff is really, really handy stuff. And if you guys haven't worked with it before, basically this is a shorter piece of dual track and you have the shelf bracket and you get them in different sizes. And this locks in here like this and you put a shelf on top of it. Pretty simple, straightforward, right? Well, the piece is, is I have a lot of space in between shelves a lot of times. And I wanted to come up with a means of hanging stuff on here. So, for example, maybe making a tool holder, cork board holders, that kind of stuff. So they do sort of make something like that. They're a little bit hard to find. They're a little bit expensive. So I figured I've got a 3D printer. I know OpenSCAD, so why not solve the problem? And uh, so what I did is kind of a long story short, scan this in and turn this into a polygon and brought it into OpenSCAD. So tell you what, let's go hop in the computer for a second, take a look at the code that I used for this, and so you guys can just see how simple it is, and then we'll come back here to the bench and take a deeper look at it. So, into the computer we go. Okay, we're inside the computer now, and we're taking a look at the code. So the first thing we see here is the polygon data that we've taken from the third-party application. Again, if you look back in the playlist, I did a complete video on this, where to get the application, how to use it, that kind of stuff. So kind of long story short, I scanned this object on a flatbed scanner, brought it into Inkscape, cleaned it up, brought it into this third-party app, got the polygon data, which you see here, and I've now embedded this into a module. And the reason I've done that is we need to take this module and extrude it because polygon data is actually 2D data. So we need to make this three-dimensional, and we do this through utilizing the linear extrude command up here. So you see we issue the linear extrude command, and then we have clip, clip module. So this makes it three-dimensional from a 2D object. Now the one thing that you have to keep in mind is that your polygon data may not be proportional to exactly what you want. So one of the things that I do with this is I really depend upon the resize command. Now one of the things I do when I got when I have this inside of Inkscape, I take a look at the dimensions of this because really what this is is nothing more than a rectangle. So I have an X and a Y dimension inside of Inkscape and I take those numbers and I actually use them here in the resize command to make sure I get the right proportion. Now the other piece I do is I also use the Z command to extrude it vertically uh, actually overriding the linear extrude command. So if we go up here one of the things you notice I've put in a couple variables bracket OD and ID so this allows me to scale the brackets height as well as the amount of material I remove from the center. So what this effectively does is changes the centers of my clips as well as the thickness of my clips. So because all these rails they kind of vary a little bit. They're all pretty close but they're all not quite uniform and the other pieces the um, uh, shelving brackets that go in the uh, the clips are about oh, 1.2 millimeters. Now we need to be a little bit thicker than that for support here so we want to get closer to two and so you can get kind of tight with this so this allows you to kind of fine tune it to your rail and then uh, after we're done with all that we just take out the material in the center over here that you see and it's pretty simple and straightforward now the great thing about this is it took me maybe a half hour to create all this uh, and part of it probably was actually consumed in preparing this video as I went through this so you can do this pretty quick you scan it just bring it into Inkscape get your polygon information embed it in a module and boom now you could also do it separately you don't have to put it in the module I just find it a cleaner way to do it so anyways tell you what let's head back to the bench take a look at how all this worked and uh, we'll see you over there back to the bench all right, welcome back. So we saw the code on this, and you saw basically this is a big polygon object, which I kind of resized. I had to do a little bit of playing to get to tweak the strength to the um, fit. So as you see here, I have a couple different ones. And so I've kind of settled on, I think it's this one. They're actually very close. So one of the things I was altering was the spread 
in this opening here a little bit and that's where you saw in the code and I mentioned it that again I've set this so you can adjust this a little bit to your needs. Now I printed these out of PLA this would be great I think out of PETG I think far better out of PETG but for purposes of this video it was quicker for me to get it PLA. So what we do is we take this and very much like the shelf bracket as you see here we just simply place it in here kind of push it in and push this in it takes a little bit of finessing and then bingo so you can kind of see how it is on the back here and then you see how it is on the front now this does kick it out a little bit because the design of this bracket actually is if you notice kicks it out a little bit from this piece up here to kind of hold the shelf kind of going upwards a little bit but what you can do is add this to your own project and you know you can put holes in here if you want to mount uh, cork boards to it or what have you now the thing is you might have to play with the uh, scaling of this a little bit uh, because you kind of see this is folded in these rails they're not really too uniform in size because if you notice you know how thin these are these are just like a millimeter and a half thick and so there's actually a lot of space in here now to make these stronger I actually uh, made them a little bit larger and so they were easier to print uh, they do pop out so again what I would do is kind of print one first and see how it how it scales to your rail and then use your slicer or in Tinkercad or something rescale the STL a little bit for this or use the uh, open SCAD code to actually create um, you know one that perfectly fits your particular rails because between, I think it's John Serling, I can't remember if it's Serling or Sterling, in Closet Mate, they're all a little bit different. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. I've got the code out on the website. The link to that will be down below. Feel free to grab it. Let me know what you make. Uh, if you do make some kind of make or remix, please post it out on Thingiverse and let me know what you created. And oh, yeah, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.